Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar session on introduction to the transport data strategy. We are recording this session so that you can uh, recap on what we've talked about and share it with colleagues that can't be with us live. Um, we do want this to be um, uh, as open and um, interactive as we can. So as you go through, if you've got any questions, please use the chat function and I'll uh, address the questions at the end when we have Q&A and uh, hopefully time for a bit of discussion. This session is immediately followed by a session on NAPTAN and Dr J is with us at the moment who is going to be running that and I'd like to give them a chance to uh, give a quick promo at this point. Um, so we're doing a session focusing on bus operators because one of the things we recognised is when we did the replatform uh, we didn't give enough love out to bus operators so that's one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did i'm just going to pop the details of the meeting in the chat we're also going to record it um and put it up on the youtube channel as well so if you can't if you're not up for three hours of meetings um totally understand uh but it'd be really great to see you and brilliant back to you tim thank you and hope that you can join that uh, it's certainly worth, if you can't make it this afternoon, catching up on the recording and joining the mailing lists and things like that so that you uh, get involved in future uh, NAPTAN work streams. Because as we know, pretty much every bit of public transport data is built around NAPTAN and the way that you access public transport. And it gets an airing in what we're going to talk about today, which is the transport data strategy, uh, which is something that the Department of Transport published a uh, few days before the end of last month in its flurry of announcements and publications. So today we're going to have a quick run through why there is a transport data strategy what its aims are and some of the themes and plans in it as well as have a quick look at some of the additional documents that were published at the same time as the um, strategy uh, and then we'll finish up with questions as i say please feel free to put questions in the chat as you go along and think about them and i'll pick them up at the end so why do we need a transport data strategy? Haven't we got enough strategies around? Well, the transport data strategy comes out of a much wider national data strategy that the government, the cabinet office released uh, a little while ago now. Um, and its overall aim and objective is to make the UK the number one data destination in the world. Um, and we have to remember that we have a number of firsts as a country in terms of making data available and accessible. Things like world first uh, border to border set of public transport access locations, first public transport um data sets so the tnds what is tnds now is the world first uh, border to border uh, fully inclusive public transport data set so we've got a bit of history and uh, background to this as a country but a lot of areas haven't been as open and transparent as transport has been in the past and so there is this national data strategy that's trying to encourage a lot more data to be made available. Uh, and fundamentally, uh, it's all about things that we were talking about more than 10 years ago when open data was really first introduced in a wide scale. It's all about 
the growth and the economic impact that you can get from making data openly available. And that has just grown and grown over time. If data wasn't openly available, uh, things like uh, Google uh, wouldn't be able to do many of the things that it does, um, along with uh, lots of other um, new innovative companies that have uh, grown up over the last decade or so. Um, and given where we are as a as an economy, we certainly need to see some growth. Uh, and so uh, the, the overall strategy that we've got nationally, uh, I think, is to be welcomed. Um, and nationally, the strategy um, includes a lot of the areas that the transport data strategy includes, of course. So um, right at the bottom, you've got to have the skills in place uh, that people need to not only know how to make data available in ways that are reusable for other people, but also how do you consume it? How do you challenge whether it's right or not? Um, so you've got to start at that basic foundation level and then ultimately uh, that will help people doing things like research. Health data uh, can open up all sorts of interesting things and a lot of research is being done at the moment into um, ways of identifying when people are getting ill and how to uh, make them better. But there's also an awful lot of jobs in the data industry. Um, and ultimately, that's really uh, what this is all about. So we've got the national data strategy. Surely that's enough. Well, because it's national and it covers all areas of government and the economy and society, uh, it's in its nature really quite high level and, and perhaps a little bit fluffy, you might say. So the transport data strategy is there to really bring some focus into what happens um, and what is needed for transport data. And there's a good number of key national challenges and objectives in transport where data is going to be absolutely critical. So things like the future of mobility grand challenge. Uh, you know, if you think about things like mobility as a service, um, walking, cycling, all of that needs a lot of data to understand how people want to travel, how they are traveling now and uh, pulling that together so that you can provide a service to people so they know where uh, scooters are, bikes are, ticketing and all of that sort of thing. The transport decarbonisation plan has a lot in it about data. If you don't know where people are traveling to and from and the goods, how do you know where you need to be putting in place things like charges? And you know, we could have a whole session on why charges aren't necessarily in the right place and things like that. Um, future of transport work that the DFT are doing is all based on data. Uh, if you look at the bus back better strategy, the, the bus strategy that was released, um, there's an awful lot in there about making information. What is the, the, the presentation of data to customers and things like that? Um, there's an awful lot of stuff in there about providing better information to traveling public, how do you provide bus priority? A lot of that these days is, is digital, all based on data. And the uh, Williams Shap review, the rail review, there's quite a lot in there about better use of data within the rail industry to reduce costs 
understand where maintenance is actually needed, that sort of thing. Um, and there is a perception, um, perhaps um, slightly um, wrong, particularly in public, in bus in particular, um, that there is a lack of data sharing and use of that data in transport. I like to think that bus in particular is a bit of a shining example of how to make data available given the long background we've got on it, but certainly outside of bus, it's quite difficult to get rail, it's quite difficult to get an awful lot of private uh, vehicle data on cars and bikes and things like that. Um, so one of the things that the strategy does is highlight where some of the barriers are and until you understand where the barriers are you can't do anything about solving them so the first one is it's quite difficult in some cases to find what data is available and how to get at it and how it can be accessed for example traffic regulation orders things that um, control where you park, for example, um, whether you can make a right turn, those sort of things. They're, they're not readily available. A lot of them isn't, aren't stored digitally yet, and they're held in 150 or more uh, local authorities. So it's really quite difficult to find what is quite an important set of data and even when you found it, it's quite difficult to use it. Um, there are quite a lot of uh, challenges around the privacy and security of data. Uh, transport data can be quite sensitive uh, where people are going to and from. If you know that, then that enables you to do some uh, potentially nefarious things and so therefore needs to be properly controlled and secured but in a lot of cases people put a wrap of security around data by just making it not available even if there aren't any real concerns and issues. Um, there's a lot of legal and contractual barriers, a lot of organisations that signed contracts for IT systems uh, a number of years ago, data wasn't properly recognised as something that um, should be properly managed and looked after. And so uh, it's quite hard in a lot of cases for the you the the, the owner of that system to go to their supplier and go, can you please make this data available? There's big bills associated with it or the supplier goes, well, no, actually, we're not obliged to, to make it available or we're not going to because we think it's our data. Um, something that we've had some challenges with in, in bus, but uh, see very infrequently these days, fortunately. Um, in a lot of cases, there's there's not much incentive to invest in systems to make data available and to make it available. A lot of organisations collect transport data, but making it available isn't their core priority. They're collecting it for a single purpose when actually there could be many more uh, purposes and benefits of making it more widely available, even within the same organisation. That's often a challenge. Um, we already touched on the, um, the the data literacy, the 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 base education and skills to be able to use data. Uh, public transport has the same issues as. The rest of uh, society in this regard, um, they, there's an awful lot of work that we can do to help encourage that technical literacy and the ability to understand data, which really is the basis of unlocking a lot of the benefits that you can get from it. Um, 
there are um, quite a number of data standards for transport data, um, more in than, than in a lot of other sectors, but some of them aren't properly enforced and adopted, uh, something that we in Artig try to uh, make sure it doesn't happen by the work that we do on um, sessions like this and uh, user guides and best practice guides on, on how to make data available. But uh, a lot of them are really quite complex standards. There's a lot of nuances in, in bus services and transport data that needs to be reflected. And so therefore, by the nature, they can end up being quite complex, but how do we make those um, more understood by more non-specialist uh, companies that come in and data consumers that want to, to use that data? Um, and um, overall, there seem to be a lack of leadership in transport data. Um, there's more of a need for some leadership from central government in particular to encourage some of the difficult to access uh, areas to open up and to provide uh, an encouragement to, to, to make it more available. And this really is where the um, transport data strategy it comes from really is trying to provide some more of that leadership to help open up data uh, across the wider transport arena. So um, the DFT in releasing it are trying to make sure that internally um, within the department, they can bring together a number of the work streams and initiatives that they've got going to be a bit more consistent and be a bit more open, um, encourage other people and other organisations to make data available, to think about data, putting in place uh, the infrastructure to be able to make it available and share it within the, the legal and privacy requirements and things like that, um, and um, provide more guidance and support to people making it available um, and um, encouraging interoperability of data between modes. Um, and there's some interesting work going on between uh, Department of uh, Energy with um, electronic uh, e-charging of vehicles and things like that and transport and so hopefully as a result of the strategy you can see with the other strategies that all the other government departments have been releasing you get some uh, linking together of course strategies are all very well somebody actually has to do something to with them um, to implement them but this is perhaps the sort of thing that we could be doing to hold different departments to account about making data available that we find useful within the transport sector. So there's quite a lot of existing work that the department has been doing. The strategy brings some of that out. Um, we've already uh, had the uh, the, the advert for the work that Dr. J and co are doing on NAPTAN, the building block of things, other things that you might be a bit less aware of. Uh, there is a rail data marketplace which makes a lot of rail data available uh, in one place, uh, a bit like um, something we'll have a look at in in a minute the fine transport data thing but specifically for rail uh, if you want to know a bit more about that then if you have a look at the uh, PTIC um, session from uh, October last year where the rail data marketplace um, came and talked to PTIC about what they were doing um, and um, 
the other um, thing that the strategy highlights in particular is street manager, which is really quite an interesting thing. For the last 15 or so years, there's been ways of electronically recording uh, street works and permits to work on the highway and things like that. Uh, street manager supersedes the old systems, brings it all together in one place uh, and makes it a lot easier to get access to that. Um, and that's a really good example of things that have been going on recently, bringing together a number of different sectors to help transport uh, get better at understanding what's going on on the road network. And it's something that within public transport, we ought to be able to use a lot more for helping with disruption management and things like that. So um, the strategy has five themes um, that it's built on. Um, so unsurprisingly, these come out of the challenges that were identified. So sharing and making sure that data is as accessible and easy to find as possible. Um, work on data standards and quality to make sure that there's an understanding of how to use that data and to identify where there might need to be changes to help interoperability, particularly with other systems like energy and smart cities, things like that. Um, and um, where there are barriers to use with quality, for example, um, what can be done to improve that quality? How can people be encouraged to uh, up their game on that to make it more useful for other people because a lot of the time the quality is okay for the purpose it's being collected but if it was a bit better quality you can make a more and different use of it um, there's a theme around the skills and culture and leadership um, looking to um, improve the data literacy education um, of people and um, you will have seen um, an announcement that came out at the same time as the strategy about bus centre of excellence. Um, one of the important strands of work in the bus centre of excellence is going to be all about helping educate people about how to make better use of data uh, and um, encouraging um, people to use it in new and innovative ways. So there are, for some of these, already hard commitments and work going on to make some of these things happen. Um, the whole culture and leadership stuff has to come first in many ways, which is why the Centre of Excellence has already been announced with its funding and things like that. So you know, the signs are, things are... Um, uh, going to happen on this one and stick, which is good. Um, there's um, as well within the Centre of Excellence um, work identified already about identifying where the user needs are, as well as the communication pieces and things like that. Um, and then um, there's a theme around um, the, the the legal stuff, the governance, the ethics and things like that to make sure that um, they are uh, dealt with appropriately. Um, so um, behind the themes, there are action plans already that have been put in place. So the themes, they're quite long term. I know you'd hope that in a strategy, it's going to last a while and it's not going to change on a regular basis. And so you know, that's quite long term, um, goes out quite a long way and, and quite broad brush. The action plans that are in the document, they're quite short term, one, two years sort of duration. Um, and uh, they'll be reviewed on an annual basis. 
um, and they cover those areas from from the themes um, and um, they will uh, some of them are things that you can already see happening or you can see how they're going to happen some of them you can go well okay there's a bit more work to do and a bit more thinking around that but that's why the action plans will develop over time and there'll be a formal update to the document every year we're promised um, within the um, action plans there are um, some principles that are being used um, to help um, make sure that they're tackling uh, the, the challenges that were identified uh, at the start. Um, and so it's things like uh, data should be open by default and use open standards. Um, uh, we probably all get behind that one. Um, data should be protected and appropriately governed so you can see already you know that they're picking up on these principles are picking up on the themes and the issues um uh, a hot topic and one that i'm going to be very very interested in seeing um how um and where this goes data and algorithms should be used ethically uh, there's been an awful lot of stuff in the news about uh, artificial intelligence you've probably already used chat gpt one of its iterations just to see what it can do um uh, you, you can with a lot of these things if you put in multiple bits of data together you can get some things that perhaps aren't quite as ethical as maybe they should be you might be able to um, piece together some personal information by d per you know d anonymizing it and things like that so there's needs to be quite a lot of work around that sort of thing particularly with some of the more sensitive transport data sets um, to make sure that uh, data is not being used for the wrong thing but that's uh, you know, really positive in my view to see that there um, and um, often um, data when it's being made open um, and first principle is it should be open by default um, one of the challenges that um, has often been seen um, is that data is gathered and published by public sector using public funds um, and it's other people that benefit um, rather than the originating bodies and things like that so there's a principle um, around um, making sure that um, there is some public benefit out of the data that's made available using public investment um, new mobility services there's a lot of stuff that we really need to understand about those how they're being used sustainability that sort of thing and so making that data available is a principle um, and one that hasn't always been the case um, is that where there's a need identified the market is asked what it can do um, and what's already available before government go away and commission something new um, and so hopefully those of you that are running uh, you know, innovative data driven uh, services and businesses might see some change in approach there um, certainly be uh, welcomed um, and um, where there is um, a identified need for data then they'll try and do it voluntarily um, and only when that fails will they look at regulation and legislation so those are the principles that are being used to to drive the the action plan um, there's already been some things done over the last couple of years that fit with this and to build upon um, the work of the strategy so um, one of the one of the challenges that was identified um, right at the start 
and we've talked about today is you know how do you know where the data is um, and what's available so um, don't know whether you've come across the find transport data service um, it's not had much coverage within the public transport sector um, but it's got nearly 150 data sets on there um, everything from NAPTAN to uh, BODS um, but also um, all sorts of road use stuff um, map pointers to where you can get mapping data and um, uh, data sets on on um, where people travel to and from and things like that and so if you are interested in data and what's available and out there then I would suggest that's your first port of call before um, you need to go anywhere else and if you've got a data set that you're publishing uh, they're very keen to have it included if you're uh, able to um, and the more data sets that get on it the more useful it becomes um, so that's the strategy um, and some of the things that have been happening at the same time as publishing the strategy there were some additional publications put out by the department that are linked to the strategy that it's worth um, uh, having a quick run through so the first one um, really quite tightly linked to the um, strategy some I think very useful guidance uh, for local authorities on um, how they might be able to make more data available tackling some of the issues that were identified so you know um, how might they go about sharing data um, there are loads of case studies um, in that I was pleasantly surprised to see quite how many there are um, from the stuff that you would expect you know, make your public transport data openly available like transport for London and perhaps not get the 600 plus organizations that they've got using it but you know get lots of benefit and things like that through to um, some uh, some interesting niche um, uh, uh, examples um, but um, if you want to find out more then it's also got some good pointers to um, more sources of support from within the department and um, outside um, within the guidance um, it's got three key areas that it's trying to encourage people to uh, people local authorities um, to make more available so traffic management uh, road data flows um, traffic light data things like that S data on active travel um, and things to support the future of transport initiatives um, so trying to tackle some of the the bigger challenges that the department's identified um, and the guidance covers everything from uh, identifying that there's a need somebody knocking on the door or you go we could really do with this data to do these things so right from the start through to all the way through to um, what happens when you no longer need it need to get rid of it how do you archive it how do you destroy it if it's sensitive you know so if you've got uh, patronage data for example for a particular purpose how do you safely uh, get rid of it um, and um, it identifies some very interesting um, reasons that authorities have said that they don't um, share data um, and it's full of interesting bits of information like this so um, you know whilst it's very interesting and probably not surprising to know that a lot of authorities 
don't make more data available because they haven't got the resources and they haven't got the money and the skills to do it. Um, that's perhaps no surprise. Um, you know, it's there's more work that needs to be done to um, actually make sure that the strategy and and this guidance on its own, you know can actually resolve the, the, some of these problems. Uh, it's identifying them uh, more openly than I've seen for quite a while, um, which is good. The next bit is going to be the interesting bit. You know, how do you actually address some of these? But there are some things in there that, um, that I'm keen to pick up um, on and make sure that we push some information out to support this to help authorities make data more available by you know tackling some of the the, the challenges that they've got with real time and public transport data um, there is um, a drum roll for dr j and team um, future of naptan report um, long awaited that's been published um, there's some interesting things in there about um, where NAPTAN might go um, and what it might be used for in future. Uh, and there is for three of the um, core projects that the DFT have been doing, Street Manager, BODS and work on opening up local authority transport data, some project evaluation, uh, that have been done for the department that makes an interesting read uh, identify what's gone well and where things haven't and it's that that is really useful to see so that the same mistakes and challenges aren't come across uh, next time in the projects um, and then um, finally um, there were some urban observatories um, looking at digital twins so that's where you build a, a digital model of the real world um, and there's been work going on in Birmingham, Manchester and Newcastle on that where they've been taking in lots of data from uh, things like pollution sensors and traffic sensors and and things like that to to come up with how they might model things at a at a city scale um, and so there's a report on uh, the benefits uh, that have arisen so far and they see being able to be uh, unlocked in future um, and that's something that NRT will be watching very closely we've already done some things on digital twins if you've been involved in some of the previous webinars and things like that um, but that's an area that we're going to be doing some more work on um, in light of this and so um, those are the um, other documents that have been um, released at the same time um, and when you put them together actually form quite an interesting um, set of data um, so the strategies out there there's some supporting documentation and, and 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 advice and things like that the big question that i've got really is what as arting do we want to go back to government um with in response to this because typically we would go back and write an open letter to the department going yes very good or no try harder um, or somewhere in the middle but what do we want to say what do you need to know more about to be able to use this um, perhaps you know what data sets would you welcome the department putting some effort into making available that's not just transport and you know, that could be something else that's going to help you with something transport related um, you know, what supports do you need what help um, to, to make better use of data um, and so uh, over to you what thoughts have you got 
what do you need? What should we be uh, including and in going back to the department with? So we've got some uh, questions. So uh, what would be the best way to remove the barriers to sharing? Um, trust is certainly one, but there's probably some others as well. Um, there's some education um, to, to go along with that. Um, yeah, thank you, Amy, for sharing the links to the evaluations. Um, when we've processed this recording, we'll circulate that to everybody along with the slide deck and I'll include um, the links to that. Um, so has anybody got any thoughts on what we should be going back to the department asking for and saying what would be useful for you? I'll certainly pick up on the on the education and things. Tusha. Hi, hello everybody. Hello, Tim. Uh, this is not necessarily uh, specifically about the data, but the use of the data. Uh, with ABOS, yeah, you can build corridors and you can play with the data. Would the uh, central government be able to provide any software or any, uh, yeah, any, yeah, any software where we could play with this data, like uh, trying to simulate trying to create digital twins of of a certain service or a certain uh, area of a county or that could be an interesting thing because yeah it's amazing to have the data but how we manipulate this data nowadays we encounter this situation that is so much data available but how we can utilize it yeah yeah so access to tools and people to help you use those tools, I guess. Yeah, exactly. As to, uh, of course, you you go and seek which data you need, but which data is there, and we don't know we can use it or how we can use it. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It could help with demographics, student demographic areas, and etc. Just an idea. Yeah, OK. Dr Jay. So I just wanted to ask Tusha a bit of a quality qualifying question so I can understand it. So you're talking about you've got this really nice ABODS data and you want to know how to take that data and maybe put demographics on it and socioeconomics on it so you can get like how many people are living within this bus route just to use a quick example within this bus route who are um, of a low socioeconomic demographic and of a high socioeconomic de demographic. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about, Tusha, just so that I've got it concrete inside my head? It, yeah, something something about that. It's, of course, it's very difficult, but I am thinking focus on digital twins. So how can I evaluate using the data available? I could evaluate a district, a village, what could happen, how it could uh, including the main factors. And OK, I'm going to ask, can I ask a follow up question, Tim? Oh, this yes. really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you're talking digital twins, like, is it like live digital twins that are you thinking about? Or are you thinking about digital twins and that I could look at what happened this week in this village um, and and model based on that? I'm just trying to understand how you're seeing digital twins. Yeah, probably as well based in historical data. So you could you could if for decision making as a local authority, yes, it could help with decision making. I would like to I would like to talk to you, Tusha, at some point because <laughs> I'm about to start to work on some how we get historical data out to people from historical NAPTAN data out to people. So I think I've just found somebody who I who I want to talk to. So thank you, Tim. I will now <laughs> run away. Yeah, happy, happy to talk to you. <laughs> Excellent, you. Tusha. I will I will quickly share my email address in the chat and I'm gonna run off and do my talk um, and get ready to do my 
two hour meeting. Um, if you're available, come along. But um, yeah, we'll I'll get in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, any more ideas? Challenges, questions? No. OK. Um, oh. So uh, question from um, Michael Napton underpins so much has a lot been done recently to ensure it's fit for the future. What are the plans to update the contents, which for much of the country reflect how things were 20 years ago? Pubs are closed, changed names, post office is gone. Yeah, so um, I think those certainly updating names and things like that is and uh, up they pop again um, are things <laughs> that Dr J and uh, the work that's going on with Naptan are going to be addressing over the coming months. Absolutely so yeah uh, great segue um, one of the one of the things that we want to look at in the future is data quality how we measure it and how we look at it so that we can make sure that it it does stay f true to purpose but also how do you tell how do you tell if you don't live in the village if the post office is closed um so how do we build some of those data sets um mappings how can we use systems to tell us this better um you know is there a thing of post offices that we can compare to naptan and go oh look this says there's a post office and this says there isn't so we're going to go and ask the question of the local authority. There's a data quality is really difficult when it's about somewhere where you don't live. So I know the data quality around my area, TfL do quite good, but I don't know, know the data quality of anywhere else. So I think there's some really interesting like, discussions to have. And then how do we start this conversation of making sure that things match between the local authorities and the bus operators? And we get that flow of communication working out. So um, the, the, the that, is, coming that is coming up. Yeah, it will be coming up. Um, I don't know when. Haraj, who should also be on the call, will possibly be able to pop up and tell us when or give an indication of time or or more is it we don't know quite at the moment the time, Haraj? I think it's more we don't know quite at the time of the moment. The, the issue in not. some respects is also because this is being used in so many more places. I mean, I was on a, a bus in Wales the other day. The next stop was Crossroads, which is incredibly helpful. <laughs> yes, um, and the voiceover and how the voiceovers are done yeah. is also a really, really key thing around accessibility um, that we need to sit down and really there, dig there into. There is an and enormous issue of getting this data through the last 20 years which need to be addressed sooner rather than later. Believe it or not, the, the session that I'm about to run is about how we get duff data out because there's a whole pile of dead, dead stops, stops that are no longer in existence. Sun exists, pas plus. Um, it does not, no longer exist. It is not there. How do we get that out of the system? Because they've not been gotten out since 2016, I think, Tim, is the last time we've uncovered that anything ran to remove stops. So, um, we are, we've got a proposal, we want to run it past people and make sure that it makes sense to everyone before we go and put it in, because if I'm going to put something in and have you all go, nah, that's not what we're after. We'd rather spend a bit more time chatting about it and put in what's going to be really working. Um, well, I do well, need to run. Right, yeah. before but you go, I'll stay a, for another five. a bus operator who serves stops only once a year, don't do it on anything of less than once a year usage. <laughs> ah, there is an entire thing that I've built in that that takes time out of it. And Michael, I would love to chat to you about that. So um, my email address is in the list. Drop me, drop yours in, and I'll try to drop you a line or drop me a line, and I'll add I'll, you I'll to drop that you a conversation. Line and we'll take it off. Take it off here for Tim's sake. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you both. Um, Simon. 
Yeah, it wasn't meant to be a churlish comment, though I'm sure it came across as such. But yeah, I think there's a difference between data quality, as in, is it right or wrong? And there's the ethics of, you know, the, the stop naming standards. They're completely different things. So I think keep keep away from stop naming standards. They are what they are for the reasons that they are. Um, keep away from that. But you're right, to, uh, Dr. Jaden, to consider the quality and, you know, refresh, I think is, is absolutely right what you were discussing. So good luck with it, mate. And um, <laughs> thank you. Your award thank will you. be in the kingdom of wherever we wish to go to. <laughs> 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 on the bus, I am sure. Um, I was just going to say, I'm very aware of that. For example, the Bricklayers Arms, um, which is about three or four stops down from me in London. There, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know when it ever actually existed because I've never seen a pub there. Um, and yet the, all the stops there are called Bricklayers Arms. So I, yeah, exactly. the local names and the naming conventions and the landmarks are two slightly different things. And I think that's one of the things... Sorry, Tim, I'm talking in your meeting. I need to run off and run my own. Yeah, <laughs> I'm aware of that. So we'll make sure that those of you that have got things to say, Dr. J and Haraj, get your contact details. So, yeah, Fatima, thank you for those. Um, so um, if there are no other questions and thoughts um our next uh, webinar that's in the diary is looking at making open data um useful um and how you can use it so looking at um not particularly bods but other data that's available and uh open and accessible how people are using it to actually do things on the ground and making a difference um, and um, we're waiting for the graphics for it but um, our next face-to-face -face event is looking at the off-bus experience so things like you know, the physical bus stops and wayfinding uh, and information on street uh, on 20th of June uh, at Palestra TFL's offices. Um, and um, we've got uh, a Duff slide there. And um, if you want to talk to Artig about anything that you uh, think we should be doing, any ideas off the back of today's session, um, or think about joining if you're not members, then please do feel free to get in contact. And thank you for your time this afternoon um, and see you all soon. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.